Bernie Sanders and his idea of socialism. So far we figured out that mostly Bernie Sanders' idea of socialism is just like Denmark and Germany and Sweden. These are mixed capitalist socialist countries. So they have an economic, they got a capitalist market, an economic market, a free market. So they have, you know, goods and services and they sell shit and what have you. But they also have a lot of government programs. They got health care, college and uh, Social Security, just giving a bunch of old people money just for sitting around not doing shit, taking money from the working class so old people can sit around doing shit. That's socialism. It's a redistribution of money, but that's, you know, it's a welfare state, right? So it's more of a welfare state. When people say welfare state is socialism, and that's not, that's not socialism. Socialism is the means of production are owned by the working class people, either through a government or a voluntary association of, of people, a group of people, so a union. So, yeah, when the unions control the world, that's socialism, when the unions control the means of production. So, Bernie Sanders' platform, it includes free health care, free child care, free education, old age pension, free disability, so he's pro-social security. Social security's got social in its name, right? So there's some social thing there. And then free 12 weeks of work leave. So that's free stuff. There's some checks there. Social Security, still, their old people are still getting checks. Disabled are getting checks. And then um, people that have a baby or if they get sick and they need to take time off of work, they're going to get three months. So every American gets three months of some kind of leave, some kind of family leave, work leave. So that's going to be a check too. So every American gets a check for three months. That's cool. Every old person gets a check. I like that. But that's the only time that the, there's actual a redistribution of money and income. So the three-month thing for work and family leave, and then Social Security, which is the most popular program in American history. So it's uh, some checks directly to the people, and then it's mostly services, child care, education, health care, the three big three, the three big free, the three big three free, the three big free. <laughs> So health care, child care, and education. He's opposed to UBI and reparations, so he's not for just spending for spending's sake. So he's got a limit. We do need to make sure that, you know, he wants to essentially raise funding for every program and everything out there. So when he gets in there, he's going to have to chisel it down to what's the most essential. I think UBI is just a good overall program, and you could build everything off of UBI. But he's not in favor of universal basic income. So what kind of democratic socialist is he? Let's, you know, we're going to go through the things he said in the past. So is he for nationalization of industries? No, okay? He's not for nationalizing all the industries. He's also, he has specifically said he's not going to do the, you know, labor camps, the slave camps, the gulags, the totalitarianism. He's not going to curb your freedoms and your rights and freedoms. It's not going to be, you know, Stalinist, the Soviet Union. It's not going to be Stalinist, Russia. He's, you know, to the right. He's way to the right of Mao and Stalin and all these, you know, uh, communists, Castro. So Bernie Sanders is not a communist. I would say he's more, he's a capitalist socialist. He's a uh, FDR Democrat. So he's more of a liberal, and he's probably going to save the capitalist, you know, system. But he's also going to protect the environment from greedy corporations, so having a sustainable environment, caring about it, you know, uh, caring about our surroundings. That's part of his democratic socialism, ending the war on drugs, ending all the, you know, wars all across the country or all over the world. Uh, imperialism. So this goes to his brand of democratic socialism. He, okay, so for nationalization of industries, he's talking about nationalizing health care, no private insurance, so just government health care. And some people say that health care is one fifth of the, you know, American economy. Is it really that fucking big? And, you know, we spend like two, three more, you know, times the amount on health care than all these other countries. So we have, I don't, th I feel like it's not that big, maybe one sixth. I might believe one sixth of the economy. But if it's one fifty of the economy, what a wasteful fucking system. I don't go to the goddamn doctor or hospital for anything unless I'm about to die. And that's just because, you know, I didn't have health care growing up. So it's, uh, you, you know, you want to go bankrupt? Well, you're about to die? Well, then you're just going to sleep that off, and uh, we're not going to go get you checked out. So, you know, preventive medicine is cheaper than emergency room medicine. If we were all healthy and had good eating habits and exercise right, we would have less health problems. So checkups would be cheaper, giving everybody checkups would be cheaper than to wait for them to have cancer or to have AIDS, and then they're dying, and you need to fix them right now with a big, you know, million-dollar operation. So.
So it's smart. It's smart to care about your health. Bernie says that Bill Clinton's a moderate Democrat, so he's to the left of Bill Clinton. Now, I'm not for sure if he's for organizing the Soviets. He's for unions, which I guess they're the same thing. Uh, working class unions, but we could have professional unions. Unions are, you know, um, on the ropes. So we need to do something with our unions because that's how the working class people are going to succeed. That's a basic building block, a basic unit of society. So what kind of union you guys in? Oh, none? Oh, so you have no friends or allies or you're not politically, you know, aligned with anybody? You're just out here just kind of floating in space all by your lonesome, huh? <laughs> So, past statements that Bernie Sanders has says, okay, so he's for nationalizing health care, which, you know, is, you know, one-sixth of the economy. So that's one thing. You know, he's going to nationalize health care. Could he nationalize more? He could. He could nationalize more than just the health care. Now, FDR believed in having free health care. So it, 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 he's still consistent with FDR. My contention is that he will only be as good as FDR. He won't be any less. He won't be any better. He'll be equal to what, you know, the Economic Bill of Rights says. Now, Bernie Sanders has tried to define it. He says, for him, socialism is democracy. Democracy is socialism. They're one and the same. Now, I can see the relationship, and he believes in an economic democracy. We need to have, you know, economic justice. They, so he believes in small d democracy. Bernie Sanders says, I believe in democracy, and by democracy, I mean that to as great an extent as possible, human beings have a right to control their own lives. You cannot separate the political structure from the economic structure. So he's saying politics and economics are one and the same, democracy, socialism, one and the same, and the whole point is that people, individuals, human beings, have a right to control their own lives. We have a right to control our lives. We should own our own labor. And so, you know, there's nothing controversial about that or radical about that whatsoever. We should own our own lives, of course. We own our lives, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our souls. We should do more than just, you know, control our own lives. But that's at the very least, you know, that's at the very least we should control our own lives. So the politics and the economics are the same for Bernie Sanders. What being a socialist means is, that's Bernie Sanders, and then you hold out a vision of society where party is absolutely unnecessary, where international relations are not based on greed but on cooperation, where human beings can own the means of production and work together rather than having to work as semi-slaves to other people who can hire and fire. So, poverty, unnecessary. We get rid of poverty. International relations aren't based upon greed but cooperation. So, he's got an overall vision of how we are in the world. We're, you know, having less um, authoritarianism when it comes to the war on drugs, militarism of the police, and the war. You know, we got 27 wars all over society. So, poverty is gone, we work based on cooperation with our international allies, and then we as individuals control our own lives, and we own the means of production so that way we can work together instead of having to be many little semi-slaves to other people. We have to pimp ourselves out for cheap labor. So the people that can hire and fire, all right, they got the money, they got the wealth, and they get to choose and say, you do this and you do that. And that's all our, our options is just be cheap labor or, you know, starve on the streets. So he's saying that we should own the means of production. So when we produce a bunch of stuff, you know, they can make money. But we can also make sure that our society is doing okay. We can make sure that, you know, some people aren't falling off and we're all doing all right. Bernie Sanders have said that folks have told him as long as he's not a Republican or a Democrat, they're fine with him. And what is a socialist? Well, it's this and it's that. Well, as long as you're not a Republican and Democrat, I'm voting for you. So that could be something. I think it's good, you know, not propaganda, but I think just what's democratic socialism? It's like, you know, it's a chin scratcher. He's a democratic socialist? Well, what is democratic socialism? Well, then that's a question. Now he's talking to the people, right? And so I'm glad he's stuck by the name. He's still a democratic socialist, still today. But he's, you know, hates that people don't know socialism. He thinks radicals and progressives should use so socialists, um, the word socialism and socialists more often. So radicals don't mind calling themselves progressives and radicals, but they don't like calling themselves socialism because in this America, right, communism is the devil, and if you're a communist, then shut the hell up, you commie bastard. There's just a, a bunch of propaganda by the government, by the s government schools, by the government media, the corporate media, so people don't know what the hell socialism actually is. 
And so he's had a problem with, you know, having to define it. So far he's defined it where we, uh, the working people own the means of production, which was Marianne Webster's definition. And then he also says we have a right to control our own lives. Political structure, economic structure are the same. So he doesn't separate politics from the economics. And then when it comes to international relations, he, it's based on cooperation and working with others, not just ba based on taking as much shit from the rest of the countries as possible. And then he also believes that poverty is unnecessary. We don't need to have poverty there. But he doesn't believe in universal basic income, which wipes out poverty. He believes giving free health care, free child care, free education, and having a f guaranteed federal jobs program, these are the, you know, direction, these are the, the path out of poverty. So, you know, tomato, tomato probably would work, but UBI is just a more direct, and he's talking about how Medicare for all, it's a clear, it's comprehensive, it's universal, so it's it's simple, which will make it popular. And in the long term, it'll be better because if it's popular and people can understand it, then it'll be like Social Security. It'll have a long life. Its longevity will be infinite, eternal. And so... What being a socialist means, <laughs> that you hold out, he says, no poverty, uh, cooperation. In, okay, so um, in 1974, he advocated a marginal tax rate of 100% on income over $1 million a year. <laughs> so, you know, 50 years ago, he said that nobody should make more than $1 million a year. Nobody should make more than $1 a year. And then class warfare and economic populism. So he's, his style of democratic socialism is kind of painting up the plutocratic, the oligarchical, the authoritarian, the landlord, the, you know, the oppressor class. The working people should be able to control their own lives. They shouldn't be able to, they shouldn't pimp themselves out to these corporations. They should control their own lives. And so the, somebody just pointed out that the 99% versus the 1%, it's very big for Bernie Sanders. We need a political revolution so the 99% get the power and the 1% don't have the power anymore. And then Bernie Sanders, just like FDR, he says he welcomes the hatred of the bankers and the big corporate conglomerates and the, you know, professional, careerist, politician, corruptionist, sons of bitches. He hates that the most new wealth gap, or the most new wealth in America goes to the 1%. And so, essentially, that just seems like the worker is hated in America. In spite of getting longer hours, working people are working longer hours, two or three jobs, Workers are more productive than what they were 100 years ago. Wages, however, have stagnated. So the 1% is getting, you know, 100, 200, 300% in profits. Meanwhile, the working class might get a dollar raise. So really the 1% is just making bank, and the 99%, they're not getting their fair share. So part of his socialism is just about the 99% versus the 1% the oligarchical, the plut plutocratic class, and then the authoritarian oppressors of all stripes. He's opposed to the oppressors. And there's only so many people, Paul Freer, Che Guevara, that talks like that. Uh, Malcolm X, the oppressors are the problem. Fuck the oppressors. Bernie Sanders has specifically said no gulags, no you know, uh, farm collectives, no slave labor camps, no concentration camps, no totalitarian, you know, big brother, just prison existence. And um, he's also specifically mentioned that socialism doesn't mean that the state owns everything. Socialism, socialism doesn't mean state ownership of everything. And so Bernie Sanders, in 1976, he believed in the public ownership of utilities, banks, and major industries. So the oil and gas companies, the banks, manufacturing companies, he believed in the public ownership of all this stuff. So he believed in nationalization of a lot of industries and maybe the state ownership of everything. And so I would like to personally ask Bernie just how far does his socialism go? Is there any industries where he says, absolutely not, we will not, you know, touch this industry? So I want to know if he's going to protect the market economy, and I want to know what industries would he never touch whatsoever and just let the free market, they, the free market does a good job when it comes to, you know, so-and-so. Are there any industries that he would exempt from nationalization? Part of me just wants to be surprised because I know socialism and politics better than the average baron, so therefore when I go to ask Bernie Sanders these questions, you know, well, actually, you know, people just want, hey, so Bernie, what's democratic socialism? Oh, it means slavery for everybody. So they just want to gotcha. They just want to get him. And so he'll just give a vague answer about it being about democracy or some shit. But I would ask him poignant, you know, direct, precise questions. 
and um, and I'll, maybe I'll ask him after he's in the White House. <laughs> he wants my vote now, so I'll probably have a better chance of a asking the question. Maybe I could ask him privately and then make it public after. But the, you know, is he going to be more of a socialist than FDR was? I don't think so. He's only going to nationalize health care if he even gets that far. And so he's only going to be up to FDR, nothing more, nothing less. He's almost identical. That's before the war on drugs, too. So FDR, just almost all the way. The war against Nazis, that was actually a good war, right? That helped Bernie Sanders' family. So FDR, he, he absolutely, you know, he adores FDR, and so did America. America voted FDR four terms. And they had to pass an amendment just to make sure that we didn't have a dictator president that's just so popular that, you know, it's not that he doesn't leave. It's just that the people keep saying, hey, come back. We want you. So he's advocated for a marginal tax rate of 100%. <laughs> if you make over a million dollars in a way, nobody should make a million dollars. This is in 1974. And so he's saying if you make a million dollars, you could survive off that million dollars. And then if you make over a million dollars, then that should go to the community for, you know, parks and schools for the children. And I believe that in some respects. But this is 1974. So he later on said that Dwight D. Eisenhower, he's not going to have a marginal tax rate higher than Eisenhower. And Eisenhower had a 91% marginal tax rate. So he's not going to go higher than 91%. Right now it's 40, it's 37% under Trump. So between 37% and 91%, the marginal tax rate for the wealthiest, people making over 400000 or more, you know, might be 80%. You know, he says it won't be more than Eisenhower, which is 90%. So he doesn't believe in a 100% marginal tax rate on people making over a million dollars anymore. But I think the political point is important to understand. A million dollars, yeah, you're making a million dollars, you sh you're doing okay. And not every there's poverty all over the fucking place, you fucking prick. You're making a million dollars a year and not everybody else is. So for Bernie, it's not a gulags, it's not a bunch of slave camps, it's not going to be death and destruction. Socialism isn't the state ownership of everything. And he says, you know, before he did believe in nationalization, he's made comments about believing in nationalism, a lot of stuff, but he specifically said that socialism isn't state ownership of everything. So that's important, right? It's not about nationalization, it's about health care and it's about um, education and child care, the three big free. And then, you know, some of the other things that I've mentioned, too, the, the protected Social Security, so keep on giving checks to the old people, and then also give checks to every American if they have a kid or if they have an injury at a workplace or if they're sick. So they get some leave time to, you know, heal themselves, or they get some leave, family leave to, um, you know, like, was it, Norway or Finland or whatever. They get one year, one year to take care of their kid. The, the state pays for it. A new baby is born, the state cares about that baby in Norway. If a baby is born in America, if the mother doesn't love that baby, that, that baby is not going to be loved by anybody. <laughs> it's a uh, dog-eat-dog. It's very individualistic. Okay, so compare Elizabeth Warren to Bernie Sanders. That's another way. You know, Bernie says he's a socialist, and he believes that capitalism only, laissez-faire, strictly casino-style, just capitalistic system is unjust. He believes in economic rights, whereas Elizabeth Warren, she's a, regular, a regulator of capitalism at the very most. Really? Battery. About to get to the end. Um, okay, so I guess it's dying. So the, he's a New Deal Democrat that's mostly right, mostly FDR. I've already explained that. I wanted to get more into exactly what FDR believed. Um, Elizabeth Warren is a regulator of capitalism at the most, okay, so she could be the liberal that saves the capitalist class, but she's, you know, she, between capitalism and socialism, she's throwing socialism into the trash, and she's probably the most, one of the most socialist, you know, uh, candidates out there, <laughs> and so, it's like she doesn't understand what, you know, that we're a mixed capitalist uh, socialist system, she doesn't know what the meaning of the word socialism is, I mean, it's a welfare state, right? We got uh, public schools and Social Security and, you know, uh, cops and fire department roads and shit. So there's, you know, public spending. So she'll be all about that. So I think actually Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are nearly identical when it comes to their policy planks. The only difference is that Bernie really just cares about the people, what's best for the people, and Elizabeth Warren seems to be protecting capitalism while also trying to protect the people and care about the people. So she's going to get us universal health care in the name of capitalism. She's going to get us, you know, free college in the name of capitalism. So, I mean, I, free college, this is welfare state stuff. They would say it's socialism no matter what. 
So I, I think she's confused, but I think it's important that she rejects socialism. So she rejects the working class people not owning their own bodies. She rejects democracy. All those things that Bernie Sanders had said, does she reject all of that? She rejects all of that, that the working class people should own the means of production and that we should own our own lives and own our own labor. We should work together instead of just pimping ourselves out to the highest bidder. And we should be cooperative with international, you know, um, uh, international relations, and we should get rid of poverty. She's not opposed to those things. She's in favor of those things. But her direction for getting there, you know, just take, for example, her, her college. So free college for everybody under Elizabeth Warren. But if you have more than $50,000 worth of student debt, then you're not going to get that canceled. Everybody that has student debt that's 50000 and less, they're going to get all their student debt canceled. So she's only going to cancel student debt for 75% of the people. So Elizabeth Warren is not going to help me. Bernie Sanders helps me. E -ha e Ilhan Omar helps me. So any, everybody, I think Kamala Harris has a college, a free college for everybody program. That's just like Bernie Sanders. So Kamala Harris will help me when it comes to college. Bernie Sanders will help me. Ilhan Omar, who's not running. But Elizabeth Warren, Elizabeth Warren's a capitalist, right? She's a capitalist. So she's not going to help me out. So she's got a limit to her programs, and maybe people might like that. Maybe she's the middle of the road. I don't think so. I think Bernie Sanders has got his finger on the pulse of America. His heartbeat and America's heartbeat are beating simultaneously together at the very same time. When, you know, Bernie's heart beats, America's hearts beat, and vice versa. So I'll get to the conclusion coming up after I charge up this damn phone. Peace.